Wonderful. We hope you could hear that out in our wonderful online community and our inline, is this the inline community, if that's our online community? Welcome to all at Anju United Church as our Trinity and Anju communities worship together in uh, peace and in grace. Uh, I thought it was going to be snowy and gray, but in fact, it's looking like not a bad day. Amen and amen. We gather, of course, uh, on International Women's Day Sunday. International Women's Day is coming up uh, this midweek. And uh, we gather on the first day of Lent as well. Uh, many of us were together on Ash Wednesday and uh, received the mark of ashes, which uh, is a good way to remember uh, that we walk humbly especially in this season as we uh, head towards Good Friday and Easter. Uh, we have a special guest. Uh, we have many wonderful guests here, but uh, the almost Reverend Aaron Michkoda is, is here with us in the sanctuary today. Aaron, yay! Well, you'll get to see Aaron in a little while as she helps me with uh, communion. Um, and we also have our wonderful Jean-Philippe Philippe, Philippe du, du here, yay! Uh, and Jean-Philippe, would you mind moving the contraption over to the middle aisle for my phone? Uh, JP is our technical assistant this morning, and I'm so grateful. <laughs> Thank you very much. So we come together as we are ought to be a, a Christian family in this place. And we want to acknowledge the lands on which we gather uh, sacred to us all. Uh, and we do that as I share these words. Oh. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. We're getting our little technical things here uh, settled. Thank you. And I'm sorry, JP. Friends, we gather on lands which hold a long and rich history of occupation and stewardship by Indigenous peoples for millennia through to the present day. Indigenous peoples, such as those from the Haudenosaunee Nation and the Anishinaabeg Nation, have deep, strong historical ties to this land. Montreal, known as Geojage to the Haudenosaunee and as Moniang to the Anishinaabeg, has long served as a site of meeting and exchange amongst various indigenous groups. We acknowledge and thank the diverse peoples whose presence marks this territory on which peoples of the world now gather. And we join in our responsive call to worship with these words. Beloved of God, come and worship the creator, the friend. Here we are from the soles of our feet to the souls within us. 
beautiful in our bodies, female and male and in between or neither, beautiful in all our bodies of all shape, shapes, sizes, and colors. Beautiful in our bodies from age one to 100 and beyond. All of us growing up, learning, risking, becoming at any age, the adventure of life. Let us worship God. And we will be singing, if you have a hymnal at home, number 380, 380. We're singing verses one and two. Uh, we haven't sung this in quite a while. I hope you will remember this, a beautiful hymn called She Flies On. We sing uh, the chorus to begin with, then two verses without the chorus in between, and we end with the beautiful chorus. So I hope uh, as you're able, please rise and we will sing. <laughs> You may be seated. All right, if I'm unmuted again, that is great. And friends, we gather our hearts and minds as we offer this prayer of our approach together as we say, God of transcendence and incarnation, Jesus came to experience life in spirit and life in a human body. He became God in flesh, so you could relate to us in suffering, compassion, life, and death. Today we gather to encounter you both in flesh and in spirit. Meet us here now, Lord, in our ways and in our needs. In Christ's name we pray, amen. I would like to ask our guest, JP, would you come forward and lead the Lord's Prayer, please, in English and in French?
O Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Notre Père qui es aux cieux, que ton nom soit sanctifié, que ton règne vienne, que ta volonté soit faite sur la terre comme au ciel. Donne-nous aujourd'hui notre pain de ce jour. Pardonne-nous nos offenses, comme nous pardonnons aussi à ceux et celles qui nous ont offensés. Et ne nous laisse pas entrer en tentation, mais délivre-nous du mal. Car c'est à toi qu'appartient le règne, la puissance, la gloire pour les siècles et les siècles. Amen. Beverly is here to help with our scripture reading this morning. Beverly. Yes. <laughs> Just see my head. <laughs> it's okay. In Lent, our scripture focuses focus will be on the communion phrase, this is my body. Each week we'll encounter a story of Jesus's life that seeks to teach something about who he was and the signs that God was with him and in him in very special ways. Ours is an embodied faith in boys like Jesus and girls and women, men, and all gender expressions. Let's listen now as Luke gives us a glimpse of the boy Jesus's growing sense of self and independence, one that concerns his parents as much as it likely surrounds them, astounds them. We're reading from Luke chapter 2, verses 41 to 52. Now every year, his parents went to Jerusalem for the festival of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up as usual for the festival. When the festival was ended and they sorry, started to return, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. But his parents did not know it. Assuming that he was in the group of travelers, they went a day's journey. Then they started to look for him among their relatives and friends. When they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem to search for him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, child, why have you treated us like this? Look, your father and I have been searching for you in great anxiety. He said to them, why were you searching for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he said to them. Then he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them. His mother treasured all these things in her heart and Jesus increased in wisdom and in years and in divine and human favor. Let us join together for the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us. Thanks be to God.
Ooh, we're having good, having some good squeakiness on the floors today. Well, friends, I know that we are supposed to uh, limit our temptations during Lent, but I could not resist the temptation to invite Aretha Franklin into our service this morning uh, to show us a little respect as we reflect on uh, the scripture and uh, this, this, um, this season. So I'm just gonna share my screen and we're going to pray that it all works. Amen. Are you still with me out there? Yay, okay. A little rock and roll for us this morning. Friends, let us be in prayer. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be a witness, O God, to your way of love, justice, and faithful walking with us. Amen. Well, oh my goodness. What a song, eh? Respect was certainly one of Aretha Franklin's greatest hits, lighting up the airways way back in 1967 as the Vietnam War was raging and the civil rights and women's movements were getting into high gear. Originally written and recorded by the great Otis Redding in 1965, his version of respect was soon eclipsed by Franklin's, turning on its head what was a, a modest hit for Redding about a man wanting respect from his woman. Anyone ever heard that before? <laughs> respect in Aretha Franklin's hands becomes a feminist anthem that would stick around for decades, uh, remaining relevant, even vital, to the history of not only Black music in America, but the history of American music, full stop. Spelling out R-E-S, I can't even spell it, R-E-S-P-E-C-T, and the reference to TCB, which is taking care of business. Remember that phrase? And then there's that chorus line, suck it to me, suck it to me, suck it to me, suck it to me. Anybody remember Laughing, the show Laughing? Mm -hmm. Suck it to me, right? Aretha was great at pulling in what was the popular culture of that time and transforming her performance uh, for this amplifying a message that women were strong and able to demand respect in a new way. She said of the song that it caught on because it was, quote, the need of a nation, the need of the average man and woman in the street, the businessman, the mother, the fireman, the teacher, everyone wanted respect, Franklin said. Well, how shall we say this? Right on, Aretha. We all want a little respect. And in Christian terms, that message comes loud and clear whenever we come to eat and drink together at Christ's table. I hope everybody at home, you have uh, some bread and some juice or wine um, to share and partake in this meal with us. Now at Trinity in Anjou for many years, uh, it has been our tradition to start Lent at the communion table. It's a beautiful thing that we do just days after Ash Wednesday, when a number of us receive the signs of ashes on our hands or on our foreheads. We are dust and to dust we 
shall return. Yes, that's certainly true. But we have to remember that the dust that we come from is literally stardust, the elements of the cosmos that when combined form everything that there is. We are dust, but we are also, so the book of Genesis tells us, we are also each made in God's image. We all come from the same stuff. Our DNA is 99.6% the same. Isn't that amazing? 99.6%, we are all genetically the same. And thank God for that 0.4%, eh? That makes us each all so unique. You'd think that all of us being so similar, more than different, well, that we would all then get the same respect or even a lot of respect because we're made in God's image, each of us. But we know historically and still today, still too many of us forget the dust from which we come. The image of God we all share in across gender, color, sexuality, age, ability or disability. Well, that should be enough. We should all be accorded the same respect. For us, Jesus's table can at its best be a great equalizer. To eat and drink with Christ is to show respect to him and to everyone else who shares in the bread and the wine it's a radical act always, always to eat with someone, to eat together. We forget that we forget that sometimes because thank God we are growing accustomed to live in a, a mixed race society. We're growing accustomed to uh, holding certain human rights as inalienable for all. Of course, these have been hard won by long, hard fought struggles. And although there is always more work to be done to transform our Canadian society into a truly more just and inclusive one, when we come to the table, I believe that we are saying, yes, we are on that journey uh, together, a journey of, of respect and honor and love. Now the place of children in our society presents an important question about the respect we owe to one another as well. Given the role models that we adults all become to children, eh? Uh, whether they're our own children or, or perhaps children that are around you, how good a job do we really do when it's so easy to disrespect people around us or to disrespect the earth? Indigenous cultures get it right when they take into account the impact of what they do for the next seven generations they're not just thinking about themselves or tomorrow. In everything, in many traditions, this is their practice to think about what is the impact for the next seven generations, not their own immediate benefit only. Jesus was quite the young whippersnapper, I must say, and wouldn't you say, in the story we hear from Luke this morning. He drives his poor parents into a panic and, and we can understand that, disappearing on them like that. 
in a crowded festival city. But Jesus, young as he is, insists when they find him, why are you surprised, he tells them. Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? Parents and grandparents, I know we need to put one of those do not try this at home signs on this particular story when we are sharing it with our children. But Jesus has a point to make. He knew, even as a young person, he knew in his DNA that he was meant to be in the temple asking those questions, learning from the rabbis, discovering within him the stardust of God's wisdom. Perhaps it was inborn in him in some unique way. That certainly is our Christian witness. But if this is so, and we share in the same image that he understood was his own as well, shouldn't we look at each other with greater respect than perhaps we do? So I'm going to invite folks on Zoom, look around the Zoom room if, if you can for a moment, and friends here in the sanctuary, let's just take a good look at each other. Yeah, we, when we gather, and I, I'm, let's see, in my screen, I'm seeing Dorothy and Roland and Gislin and Rosemary and Kim and Norm, and I know a whole bunch of you others are out there and on the phone, I see you too there on the phone, but how special we are made of stardust 99.6% the same. Thank God, 0.4% unique, and each of us is beautiful. Uh, and, and yet, and yet, we can be disrespectful to one another in how we organize our societies, etc. 99.6% of our DNA shows we are all part of one body, more the same than we are different, be it in how we treat a child or an elder, a woman, a man, or someone who experiences gender more as an in-between, our needs to be loved, to be given a fair shake in life, to be treated with respect. These are core aspects of who Christ not only calls us to be, I think, but even demands us to be. As we approach this table, let us do all that we can, all that we can to live with this, which is God's dream, to keep God's dream firmly in mind. Amen. Amen. As we prepare ourselves for communion, we will sing one bread, one body. If you have a hymnal at home, it's number 467. We'll be singing verses 1 and 2. Bread. 
so. Amen. I need some help with this. I can't tell you what I'm Maybe I can tell you. <laughs> oh my goodness. I have to have one of those for this service. I can't tell you what a pleasure it is to have uh, my dear friend and colleague, uh, Erin Mitchcota, here, the almost reverend. Uh, and thank you, Erin, for uh, blessing us with uh, your help today. Uh, and of course, our technical assistant, uh, Mr. jean Philippe. Amen, amen. We come to this table knowing that all are welcome. Everyone uh, from one to 100, uh, you need not be a member of this United Church, all who are open to holy mystery and the possibility of transformation in and through Christ are welcome to share in this good, good food this morning. Uh, we'll be following our response litany. Uh, please join in as uh, the bolded cards. Friends, God is with us. Female and male, in between and neither. Christ invites us in all our differences and in all our equality. Let us pray. God of all times and places, we gather at your table of grace to recall your vision of hope for all.
all people and for your world. Through Abraham and Sarah, you revealed your promise in the surprise of a child. Through the prophets, you called your people to seek justice and resist evil. Through ordinary yet powerful women such as Esther and Ruth, you demonstrated a faith that inspires strong, risk-taking living. In Jesus, you reveal the new who you are, your way of ultimate forgiveness, ultimate love. Against all odds, he embodied a love for you and all people and creatures, befriending the poor, eating with the outcast, confronting the powerful. We remember Jesus' self-giving love always there for others, forgiving of all, even those who would betray and kill him. For this witness, and for how you call us to live, grounded in the tough realities of life, even as we seek to love, pursue justice, and forgive ourselves and others, we give you thanks and praise. Hear us now as we offer to you our prayers in the silence. Oh God, we offer up special prayers this morning for the people of Ukraine, one year in, Lord, uh, in their war um, that has been brought upon them by their neighbor, Russia. We ask you to be with them and give them hope and strength to continue to pursue uh, their freedom, uh, the values that they hold dear. Please, oh Lord, uh, Find a place in the hearts of Russians everywhere to just say no to this war of aggression in some way and in somehow, oh God, possibly a great personal cost and risk, we would pray. We list up all the names on our prayer list this morning as we do each week. And we thank those that take their lists home and uh, pray these names through the week. Some we know their situations, many we don't, but each one you know, oh God. And we thank you for the faithful prayers of our congregations. This morning, we lift up in prayer the Luchuk family, uh, Trinity family, that unfortunately have experienced a death uh, in these past weeks. Um, Annie's dear husband, John, uh, has died. And so we lift our hearts to all the Luchucks um, as we uh, comfort them uh, with phone calls, with uh, food that we might bring, um, making sure that they know that we care. Indeed, for all those who mourn, O oh Lord, uh, lift up their hearts. We thank you for the promises of eternal life, uh, a great promise that is uh, your gift to us, unearned and free. For all those things that we have named in our hearts this day, so much more, even size too deep for words, we give you the thanks that you hear our prayers, and in your time and your way, you will answer. Amen. <laughs> On the night before Jesus died, he took a loaf of bread and he gave thanks and he broke it and said, Take, Take and eat whenever you do this, remember me. Après le repas, Jésus a pris la coupe et la donné en disant, we do remember 
We remember his might and love, his growing up, his teaching, his dying, his rising to new life. In sharing this meal, we share in the mystery of the faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Let us again be in prayer. Holy mystery, we call on you to transform these ordinary things as you continually transform the world around us. In the sharing of these simple elements, bless us and what we do, that we may taste and see your goodness. In common, love and cup, reconcile us one to another and one with you, one bread, one body. Friends, just Friends, how might we embody this transformation Christ offers? Yes. And the formal, set down to God and friend, dismiss the vision and be flexing with trust, yes. write a love letter, share some friendships, give us thought and encourage you. Manifest your loyalty in a word or deed. Keep our promise, find the time, or go to the church, or even listen. Avoid envy, accept your demands of others, and take first of someone else. Appreciate, be kind, be gentle, laugh a little more, deserve confidence, think about arms and smiles, resist from places, express your gratitude, direct your pure God, and the heart of the child, take pleasure in the beauty and wonder of the earth, speak your love, speak in death. Speaking clearly, speaking still, like speaking yet. In this bread, broken and shared, may we all become one new life in Christ. God is here among us in the sign of the bread. Let us eat of it and, and be filled. filled. This is my body broken for you, and as you eat it, remember me. This is my body, this is my body broken for you and as you eat it remember me this is my body broken for you and as you eat it Remember me.
Christ, this is the body of Christ, let us eat of it and be filled. And it is good. Amen. Amen. Le opisant cette cuve de bénédiction et fait peur en buvant tout cela. Tout puis être habilité à vivre la vie ressuscité du Christ. Dieu est ici parmi nous grâce au signe de cette cuve. Buvons-en et notre soif sera étanchée. Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven, fill me till I want no more. Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up and make it all. Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsty heat of my soul. Bread of heaven, oh, feed me till I want no Fill my cup, Lord, I lift it up and make me whole, make me whole. Fill my cup, Lord, I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven, oh, feed me. Till I want no more. Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up and make me oh, make me oh. Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up and make me own. Amen. Amen. Friends, this is the cup of blessing. Let us drink of it and our, our respect be quenched. And it is very good. Amen. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is justice in the name of Jesus. There is anointing in the 
name of Jesus to break every chain, to break every yoke, to break every reaching. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the blood of Jesus. There is anointing in the blood of Jesus to break every chain, 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 to break every chain. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. There's an army that won't take no for an answer. There's an army that's rising up. To break every chain, 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 to break every chain. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And we pray. Responsibly, please come in on the golden lights, Mark and Paul. Thank you, O Christ, for this feast of life. We are fed by your love. We are strengthened by your life. Nous sommes envoyés dans ce monde pour assumer la vision que Dieu a déposé dans nos cœurs. We are now commissioned to be as it happened. Forgive as we have been forgiven. François, rendu à Dieu. Thanks be to God. We come a time of offering, a time when we give of ourselves. Oops. We come to a time of offering, a time when we come to give of ourselves and uh, so that others might uh, have the respect of a life of dignity uh, with the things that they need for, um, for goodness and wholeness. We pray both here in Canada and around the world through our mission and service giving. Um, and we are grateful for all the gifts uh, our congregations receive. And let us uh, be in prayer as we uh, offer these gifts. Oh God, we thank you for uh, the gift of giving. For many of us out of our abundance, but we remember the widow's might, O oh God, giving all she had when she really didn't have much to give whatsoever. Give us a faith like that, O oh Lord, so that as we uh, give of ourselves, give our, our respect um, to others, uh, the money and time and talent that it takes to nurture our Christian communities, that we might do so with joy. Amen. So just a, a few announcements before we begin our hymn. And uh, John, if you'd like to take up the offering now, that would be great. Um, we do have announcements uh, for Trinity, uh, the announcement of our uh, annual congregational meeting went out uh, last night, uh, two weeks from today. Uh, March 12th, believe it or not, we'll be heading towards the middle of March by then. And we hope that many uh, Trinity members and adherents or guests would want to stay after church on the 12th uh, or come in on Zoom and be part of the governance life of our congregation. 
Anjou will be announcing its annual meeting in due course. Um, anything else needs to be said about that? Uh, Judy is here today looking still for any last minute RSVPs for a Chile fundraiser, which is going to mission and service. Um, $15, it's a great price uh, to uh, have a delicious meal and also give a little extra so that our uh, communities can give to those beyond our, our doors. So uh, we hope many who are attending the meeting will wish to partake of that. And the deadline is today. If you could let, okay, let Judy know today, preferably if you haven't yet, or uh, by Tuesday for sure. Um, so I'm, I'm looking forward to Chile. So we need enough people to make it work. And I hope uh, people will be generous with that. Uh, yes, um, we are keeping Claudette Prautauskas and her family in our prayers as her brother Denis has died and his funeral is coming up. Is it this week, Claudette? Next Sunday. Next Sunday. So a week from today uh, in the afternoon. I see. So visiting all day and then the, the service will be on Monday. Okay. Okay. So thank you, uh, Julia. And uh, again, um, I'm so sorry to announce that the Lu uh, John Luchuk, uh, dear friend, has died. Um, I was with his family and Annie is being looked after by her children, but we, we keep them in our prayers um, indeed. There are other announcements. Uh, hopefully most of you received them in your weekly uh, newsletter that comes by email. Um, do check out what's going on and uh, participate as you are able. And now we sing uh, verses three and four of She Flies On. <laughs> Rise as able. join with me in our responsive commissioning and benediction. Friends, this is the day that God has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. 
we will not offer to God offerings that cost us nothing. Go in peace to love and to serve. Seek peace and pursue it. In the name of the Trinity of love, God in community, holy and one. Amen. We have a new Lenten choral benediction for this season. Uh, Julia, we'll ask her to maybe play it once, and then uh, we'll I'll start to sing, and please join in. We'll sing it several times through. Uh, it's called the Peace Hymn. peace this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Amen.